Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, People's Democratic Party's leadership stage protests at the INEC headquarters say they want to reclaim their mandate. Campaign Director General of the President, Rotimi Amechi, calls on the PDP to partner with the All Progressives Congress in developing Nigeria. President Muhammad Buhari meets service chiefs. Inspector General of Police says they have resolved to deal ruthlessly with anyone disrupting Saturday's elections. A UK patient might be second to be cured of HIV after stem cell treatment. On business news tonight, Central Bank bans foreign exchange by commercial banks and bureau de change operators to textile importers in the country. On sports news tonight, Borussia Dortmund, Tottenham, Real Madrid and Ajax battle for survival in Europe's biggest club competition. Hello and from Abuja, presidential candidate of the National Rescue Movement drags President Muhammad Buhari and al Haji Atiku Abubakar to court over campaign financing. The People's Democratic Party is leaving no one in doubt about their intention to challenge the outcome of the presidential election. The party, led by the national chairman, Mr. Uche Sikondos, staged a protest to the INEC headquarters in Abuja today, claiming that it is the move to reclaim, according to them, the mandate given to them by the people. Our correspondent, Kayla Megwa, now reports. Party members convened at the Legacy House in Abuja and led by the party chairman, made their way on foot to the INEC headquarters. It's been an interesting few weeks for the People's Democratic Party since the elections of the 23rd of February. And since then, the party officials have minced no words in communicating their disappointment with the results returned by INEC, stating categorically that those results will be challenged in court. What the hell are you? This protest, however, has another element to it. The party wants the military to stay away from the polls, which are to hold on the 9th of March, as they allege that the military was used to rig the elections on the 23rd of February. After a short wait, party officials are met by officials of INEC, and the chairman of the party states their demands. Sir, we have come to register our protest, the involvement of the military in the exercise of election by INEC. We have also come to register all parts of the country from the north to the south, the rigging and the manipulations that took place. We have the right to do so. And we are challenging your declaration in the court, so we don't have any problem with that. But moving forward, is that what you are going to do on the 9th? The presidential candidate of um, uh, PDP, myself as the national chairman and members of my working committee, are being intimidated every day by EFCC. Is that how politics is being played? After accepting the petition by the party, INEC addresses the party officials. INEC has received your complaint. We're going to look at it critically. Where we have to change, we will change. But where it belongs to others, we will come together and work together. And I believe that on Saturday, the elections are going to go on very, very well. We are looking all for we ask is that for your own sake too, your mantra should be peace. It's peace. They are making allegations of militarization during the election, uh, accusations of rigging during the elections, and they are demanding that on the 9th of March that none of that repeats itself, and they are also uh, contesting the results of the elections on the 23rd in court, and they are saying that is a done deal, they will not give up without a fight. Kayla Magua, Channel Television News. Meanwhile, the Director General of the Buhari Presidential Campaign Organization, Mr. Rutimi Amichi, is calling on the PDP to join the party in building a nation that all Nigerians should be part of.
Mr. Meche was speaking at a news conference held at the All Progressives Congress campaign office in Abuja. He also speaks about the alleged killing of soldiers in Abonema community in River State. Our correspondent Linda Akibe reports. This is the first time the Buhari Presidential Campaign Organization is speaking to journalists after the February 23rd presidential and National Assembly elections, which saw incumbent President Buhari return as president. The Director General of the Presidential Campaign is appreciative of the votes by Nigerians and assures that with the presidential election over, government will focus on the economy and security in the country. Amidst moves by the runner-up in the presidential election, Mr. Tikwa Bubaka, to challenge the election results, Mr. Mechi makes this appeal. Look, we are grateful to Nigerians, we are grateful even to PDP. Let's not fight over this issue in court. Let's work together as friends. And four years' time, we'll come back to another election and encourage INEC to ensure that the election is free and, and fair and credible. And that's what the president is emphasizing. Several Nigerians were killed during the presidential and national assembly elections in Rivers, Kogi, Oyo, Bielsa, and Delta states. A tragedy Mr. Mechi condemns. He also disassociates himself from the violence in River State. The first violence was at Abonema. A lieutenant, no, the lieutenant was standing protecting INEC staff. INEC staff hired killers, not even from Abonema, came all the way from. So I'm part of the I won't mention them because why not? They are the right my area. And open fire on military men. Open fire on who? Military men. And kill one. Please, what do you expect? Where is that person going to be? So what do you expect that they will fold their hands and then you kill all the soldiers there? So when they responded in self-defense, hey, they've killed, they are demonstrating the dominant soldiers. Why not one soldiers in an area that is predominantly dominated by militants? The next, after election, two days or three days after election, they go back to that same place, kill three soldiers, and cut away their guns. And the gentleman is asking me if I'm remorseful. I'm neither a military man, nor am I from a bonnie man, nor did I leave my house to go to a bonnie man to vote that day, or the previous day. So how am I involved? Mr. Mechi assures that President Buhari, who is returning for a second term, would run an all-inclusive government devoted to improving the lives of Nigerians. Linda Akibi, Channels Television News. The menace of vote buying has been identified as a major threat to democracy, which impacts negatively on the integrity of the electionarian process. According to some political analysts, the negative effects of vote buying include increased voter apathy, and the election of unqualified individuals into public office. Despite these dangers, though, vote buying continues to thrive in Nigeria's politics. And this next report takes the background look at its implications as well as solutions proffered by experts. Vote buying has been described by many as a worrisome trend that's impacting negatively on the integrity of elections in Nigeria. It is an age-long practice among politicians that has continued to evolve over the years. In some instances, politicians have had to induce voters with food items or cash to beg for votes before election day. This practice, however, took a new twist between 2011 and 2015, when politicians began to move to polling units with money bags to induce voters. Vote buying has continued to thrive even though offenders risk 12 months imprisonment or a maximum fine of 500,000 naira under the 2010 Electoral Act as amended. Participants at this national dialogue on the dangers of vote buying in Abuja decry the non-implementation of existing laws and are advocating the need to address the reasons why the practice thrives in Nigeria. Vote buying promotes inefficiency. Because when people buy vote, the needs of voters will be ignored after election. The Electoral Act prescribes spending limit for every political party and donation limits. I want to advocate that we must respect laws that we have made. We cannot make laws and then preach it. 
by both government and citizen with impunity. Bribing of voters through the deployment of various strategies has been an ugly part of a part and parcel of a electoral process since the advent of modern democratic system in the country. The phenomenon has con continued to intensify with each electoral cycle, calling into question the extent to which the outcome of elections truly really represents the expressed preferences of the electorate in affected areas. There is a consensus among participants at this conference that vote buying impacts negatively on the integrity of the ballot. Some of these effects include voter apathy, as well as the election of unqualified representatives into public offices. In order to eliminate these dangers, political watchers are recommending a stronger interagency collaboration for proper voter education, as well as implementation of existing laws that prohibit vote buying. The issue of vote buying in Nigeria has remained on the front burner despite campaigns by concerned agencies and individuals to bring it to a stop. What really is the reason why vote buying has continued to resurface in our political lexicon? We're now being joined by the Director General of the National Orientation Agency, Garba Abari. Uh, Mr. Abari, I want to thank you so much indeed for joining us on the News at 10. Vote buying is not new to us as a people. But everyone does agree that it has a big concern, the challenge it presents to our electoral process. Why is it difficult for politicians to campaign and go on elections without financial inducements, in your view? Uh, th thank you very much, Gimba. Very good evening. I, I think this is an issue which has characterized Nigeria's political process over a very long period. It is getting very worrisome that uh, as our, in, our elections are increasing in, qual in quality, the issue of vote buying, like a current decimal, refuses to go away. And this has to do actually with the attitude of our politicians who are very desperate to, 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 to get to power by any means. And uh, as a result of this, they go to every extent to circumvent the law and uh, to uh, bring unwholesome practices uh, 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 in order to 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 win to win court and uncourt, you know the the confidence of the voter. That is one. The second issue actually is an attitudinal issue, and it is also systemic. It is attitudinal in the sense that over the years, despite all efforts at centralisation, advocacy, and what have you, for to our politicians to play according to the rules of the game, this issue as a canker one has refused to go. But most importantly, I, thought, I want to say that the laws have not been applied and applied strictly to people who are, uh, uh, are caught in the breach. If the laws are applied and the people that are in the breach are made example of, definitely we will see uh, a downtrend in the incidences of vote buying and the selling. You see, the Electoral Act speaks about voter inducement, and it has manifested in so many ways, either bringing food stuff to the polling unit, giving money out directly, you know, a transactional manner, where you give money directly at the polling unit and, and, uh, to buy votes, or you go a day before the election, house to house, to induce voters with one form of uh, item or the other. All of this, tend to impinge on the credibility of our elections and, of course, impinge on the kind of leadership that emerges at the end of the day. Now, what th th there was a national dialogue this, mo the, this morning. Prior to that, there had been sensitization and advocacy by the National Orientation Agency, by stakeholders, uh, critical stakeholders, uh, 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 religious leaders, traditional institutions, you know, and, uh, and the civil society organizations that are working in the area of election and the electoral processes to bring to the fore the issue, this issue of vote buying, so that we begin to expand the process of the conversation, develop policy options, and of course, implementable strategies that will curtail uh, this very worrisome development that is impinging on the credibility of our elections.
That's a good place but to most importantly, right. uh, I, I must to thank you for talking to us, the Director General of the National Orientation Agency, Garba Abari. In part two, after the break, former President Chief Olusegu Obasanjo says that his criticisms against the President is not personal, marks his 22nd birthday.